This condo had popcorn ceilings that I didn't want to scrape off and retexture. I cut my shiplap pieces to length. The next step was to make sure that I could identify the supportive pieces of wood up in the ceiling. The next step was to place construction adhesive on the back of the shiplap and then, using a nail gun, attach this to the ceiling. And then I needed to cover up the nail holes using a little bit of caulking. Once the room was complete, the next step was going to be to add trim along the sides to cover up the gaps. Once the trim pieces were attached, I then used caulking to seal the little gap. The ceiling looked great, but it definitely needed some paint to finish it off and make it look clean and bright. I love the way it looks, and the whole room has more of a coastal type of feel perfect for this Florida condo. Before you spend money on expensive tile, check out this $100 idea. I used shiplap and cut it to size the length of my kitchen wall, and then I painted it using a paint sprayer. I placed my first piece in the kitchen, and I made sure to mark where the outlets were. I needed to cut just the little tongue part of the shiplap. I simply placed the shiplap in place and secured it using a nail gun. I continued this way up the wall. It took me four pieces of shiplap to get to the top of the backsplash and fit right underneath the cabinets, and added little trim pieces to the edges to give my project a finished look. The entire project ended up costing well under $100 and taking only a couple of hours to complete the project from start to finish. I wanted to update this condo bedroom on a budget and in one day. Started by taping off a general idea of where molding would go. I had marked the wall with a pencil where my pieces needed to go. So the next step was to apply my adhesive on the back side of the molding and attach it to the wall using a level to make sure that everything was straight. I also made sure that my mitered corners were as tight as possible and they really did go together very well. I started caulking the places where the molding met the wall to cover up that small gap and give it a professional finish. I caulked it on the inside and outside of all of the picture frame sections. Once I had the molding in place, it was ready for paint. We ended up with this dark gray with a bit of purple undertone. In this room, I also replaced the flooring and added nice big baseboards. And here's the result. I love the way the furniture sits in relation to the picture frame molding, and I love the way the accent wall makes the room look. So I headed to the hardware store and picked up some one by fours. I measured the wall and marked out where my boards would go on the wall. I made sure it was level and then used a nail gun to attach the boards vertically to the wall. Now I could measure down for the horizontal boards. Then I cut the horizontal boards and attached them. I cut the board around the outlet area and left plenty of space around it so that I wouldn't have any problem plugging things in in the future. I caulked the inside edges of my newly formed accent wall boxes. Once this dried, I sanded down the joints. I picked out a blue color that I thought would look soothing in the room, and it only cost me $30. That was the cost of the wood, since I didn't have to pay for the paint, since it's something that I reused from a previous project. So I went to the dollar store and I bought three bags of those vase filler gems. After sorting them, I washed them off using blue dawn and water, and then laid them out to dry. I drew lines from the edge of the vanity to meet the mirror line. I applied a thin coat of mastic using a small notched trowel. Then the fun began as I pressed the gems into the mastic. I worked in small sections so the mastic wouldn't dry too quickly. Once I was done, I mixed the grout. I mixed one cup of grout to a half a cup of water. I applied the grout in small sections, making sure I was pushing it between each of the gems. I wanted to make sure that every spot was filled in between them. After one hour, I checked again, and yep, it was nice and dry. Using a large spun and plain water, I washed away all of the excess grout. I removed the painter's tape that I had placed on the top of the vanity and applied caulk, smoothing it out with my finger. Wow, what a difference it makes, and no more splattered wall. Thank you.